There is a curse that haunts the school, a curse that befalls those who touch their jelly donut in secrecy, the consequence of which is an immovable lasagna curtain. Kamite is the only one at his school, a hero whose blessed right hand has the power to undo the evil curse. His holy right hand vibrates to alert him whenever someone nearby is afflicted by the curse. One day at school, a girl named Kaori gives in to her raging hormones and indulges in rubbing her jelly donut in an empty classroom. Later, she joins her friends who are engaged in discussing a rumor circulating about the curse of immovable lasagna curtains. Initially, Kaori scoffs at the rumor, but doubts start creeping into her mind, considering she had just caressed and fondled her jelly donut. Just as she begins to tremble with fear, Kamite heroically appears behind Kaori and informs her that the math teacher requested him to return her assignment. Irritated by his sudden presence, Kaori and her friends label Kamite as a creep for sneaking up on them. He denies their accusation, and in an attempt to ease the tension, he showcases his cool Ultraman t-shirt. The girls pretend not to be impressed, but everybody knows they're cool, so Kamite remains unshook. As he hands Kaori her assignment and takes his leave, the girls mock him while telling him to get cursed. With a smirk, Kamite turns around and informs them that getting cursed is what happens when one engages in sneaky actions, thinking nobody is watching. While the other girls remain oblivious, Kaori realizes that he knows about her deed in the Chamber of Secrets. Suspecting him to be the one responsible for casting the curse, she decides to follow him and find the perfect moment to confront him about it. Strangely, he enters the women's bathroom, prompting her to rush inside after him. However, he mysteriously vanishes. As Kaori begins feeling hopeless and fears she may soil her lasagna curtains, Kamite appears behind her. He had been aware of her trailing him. Kaori threatens Kamite, foolishly accusing him of placing the curse on her. She tears up and helplessly shares her predicament. As she holds on for dear life to keep the faucet from overflowing, she berates the one person who could actually help her. Instead of seeking revenge, however, Kamite benevolently offers to lift the curse. He unwraps the cloth from his sacred right hand, revealing a strange marking. But that's not the only thing he's about to unwrap. She asks what the marking is, but he ignores her inquiry, as that's not something a side character like her needs to be aware of. At first, Kaori denies needing the help of her lord and savior, but Kamite calmly questions whether she wants her wet lasagna curtain to possibly infect her jelly donut. She becomes speechless and reluctantly concedes to her impending calamity. Kamite kneels down and gently but skillfully pulls down the curtains. As they slide down, she anguishes over the state of her lasagna curtains. What if they smell like the local fish market? As she grieves about wearing a cheap one that day, Kamite successfully completes Mission Impossible, coming to theaters July 12th, 2023. With a bright smile, he holds up the curtains, then carefully folds them into his pocket. Kaori resists like the foolish girl she is, so Kamite calmly explains that her lasagna curtains remain cursed and must therefore be purged from existence. As they leave, he cautions her about indulging in another fist fight with her jelly donut at school. She makes a futile attempt at denying an altercation, but Kamite's eyes of truth see through her feeble facade. Finally, Kaori admits that the desk and her had a brief relationship. She threatens him not to tell anyone. Once again, like a true gentleman, Kamite concedes and begins to explain how the curse came to befall upon the school. It was the result of someone who had passed away while on the school grounds, someone who couldn't fulfill their prophecy in a satisfying manner despite their urge to do so. Alas, Kamite reminds Kaori to be careful and walks away like a G. She shyly expresses her gratitude and apologizes for her silly accusations earlier. He responds with a graceful smile, explaining that with great power comes great responsibility. On another ordinary day at school, a girl named Totomi walks down the hallway, supported by her friend. She profusely sweats while enduring the pain of being a plumber to her own bursting pipeline. Tomomi tries to convince her friend that she's fine, but Kamite already recognizes that she's suffering from yet another curse at the school. He attempts to follow her in the room, but Totomi's friend Miwa, thinks she's Gandalf the Grey, and refuses to let him pass. He decides to leave her be for now and return later. When he returns later, 
he finds her remaining steadfast in front of the door. He asks if Tatomi is still past the door she guards, and she confirms his suspicion. Kamite realizes there's not much time before the lasagna curtains might get soiled, so he tries to pass Gandalf the Grey, but she stops him yet again. She then accuses him of being a Boromir and coveting Tatomi's rings, just like everyone else. Kamite charismatically reassures her that he has no such motives, and finally manages to persuade her. Upon finally entering the room, he finds Tomomi visibly distressed. He gets relieved that he's made it in time, and graciously offers to release her from her torment. However, Totomi power slaps him with such strength that he nearly sees a glimpse of Jesus. Then, she angrily walks off. Kamite realizes the truth behind his trembling hand. Indeed, it was never Totomi-san, but the curse had befallen upon Gandalf, I mean Miwa. She even tried to cut the lasagna curtains with a pair of scissors, but her efforts were in vain. Tears of desperation stream down her face as she desperately seeks help. In an act of utter hopelessness, she contemplates burning down her curtains entirely. But Kamite appears just in time and offers to undo the curse. He removes the wrap from his right hand, unveiling the mark of the Chosen One. With the precision of a veteran surgeon, Kamite carefully undoes the curtains from the lasagna. He gets a pleasant surprise at her bold choice of curtains and compliments her eye for interior design. With yet another successful mission impossible, executed as smoothly as Tom Cruise, coming to theaters July 12th, he holds up the cursed curtains which had ensnared and nearly cost Gandalf, I mean Miwa, her life. She gets embarrassed and tries to snatch it away from him, but Kamite says no can do. The curtains must be cleansed and rid of its malevolence. Finally, he warns Gandalf, I mean Miwa, that jelly donuts ought not to be tapped. She shyly asks why he is being so kind. Kamite recounts a time in fifth grade when a fellow classmate fell victim to the curse, becoming the subject of ridicule throughout the entire school. Kamite vowed to never allow anyone else to suffer the same fate as her. Ultimately, his plan is to eradicate the very source of the curse, once and for all. Gandalf, I mean Miwa, asks how he can accomplish such a menacing task. But that's not something a side character needs to be aware of. So Kamite excuses himself to go work on his blog. Just like Kaori, Gandalf thanks Kamite for his heroic act and apologizes for her previous short-sightedness. Oh? You didn't leave yet? I'm sorry I had to make the video eight minutes long. Make sure you subscribe. And go watch Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, which comes out on July 12, 2023.